everybody. I'm so excited to do this first live episode with you guys today. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some real talk. So I want everybody to be prepared to ask some questions, to listen in, take some notes, share, share, share. That's the number one thing I need everybody to do right now is start sharing this live. Let's get some people in here. I see one person in here. Let's get some more people in here. Okay, before I get started, I'll just give my little, hey, welcome to another episode, everybody. So tonight, it was just really on my heart to do a live um, dedicated to singles, but really to everybody. Um, I just wanted to have a night where we can come together and laugh and talk and share in and have some real dialogue, some real conversation um, I know a lot of times as single people, we tend to shy away from social media or shy away from what everybody else is doing because it's Valentine's Day and we feel like we're missing out or we feel like we don't have um, our desires at that time yet. So we kind of shy away um, from social media. And I just wanted to kind of give us an opportunity to change that view um, and to be able to come together and just have some real talk. It's needed. Um, you know, people are suffering in silence and we don't have to, we have other people who are in the same situation, who are like-minded, um, who think what we think, who believe what we believe. And so just being able to come together and share that dialogue together, um, I just thought that it would be a blessing and absolutely everybody is welcome. So if you're not single, I want you watching too. You may be able to jump in in the comments and give us some, some tips, some tricks, or even ask some questions to help the dialogue stay flowing. So everybody, I want you to go ahead and just join in, ask those questions, give us some comments, give some feedback. Tell me what you like. Don't be so hard on what you don't like. <laughs> and we're going to have some fun tonight. I'm just going to take about an hour, hour and a half of your time. I don't want to hold everybody too long. But I think we're going to have fun. I got a special guest, Stephen Price. He's going to be on with me tonight. And we're going to just talk. And we're going to we're gonna um, just give some viewpoints about being single right now in this season. Um, how we handle it. How we cope with it. Different questions that as single people are asked. And sometimes not broadly talked about. So we're going to just answer some of those questions tonight. So again, share, comment. And let's have some fun. Hey, Steven, how you doing? I'm good, good. How are you? Okay, so we did it successfully because I was a little confused. Like, I hope I'm able <laughs> to do this for Facebook. You know, right. it's my first time having somebody on here with me. So we got it. <laughs> you can see me? I can me? see you fine. You can see me? Okay. Okay, yeah. volume sound okay. You can hear me? Yeah, everything sounds Perfect. good. Perfect. How's your day going? It's going pretty good. It's a Sunday. Yeah. And so, How was yeah. church? Church was good. Uh, I had to go. I had to watch it virtually because I was at work. But yeah, church was good. How about for so you? I had to watch live as well. I had a uh, a little weekend trip that it was planned. So I was traveling back. On okay. <laughs> yes. So for those who don't know, away. what church do you go to? Uh, New Liberty Apostolic Faith Church. Uh, my pastor is J.O. Rasul. Yes, big bro. <laughs> That's big bro. Yeah. <laughs> It's literally my big brother. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I just want to say, um, first and foremost, before we get started, I just want to give you a thank you publicly in front of everybody. Um, thank you for accepting my invitation today, um, for jumping on this live with me. <laughs> As I told you the other day, you don't know me. You could have said absolutely not. Um, <laughs> but you actually right. took the chance to come on here and just talk with me. And hopefully we can just be a blessing to those who need to hear this. Um, this talk is not something that's happening a lot, um, you know, and I feel like a lot of times, especially being in church, when we talk about being single, you know, it's just wait, wait on God. <laughs> and we are. And I right. definitely agree with that message. But at the same time, as single people, there are still more to there's still more to it. There's still that daily thing that we deal with um, and just daily things that we're trying to understand and learn as we go along. So I just want to be able to do this and hopefully bless somebody. Um, as I was saying before you jumped on, just we don't have to shy away from Facebook because it's Valentine's Day. We can take our day right, and, right. and, you know, do some things for ourselves and encourage ourselves and bless ourselves. So thank you. 
Thank you for thank, thank you, like you said. Thank you for offering me the invitation. Uh, yeah, I mean, usually this type of stuff I try to <laughs> stay away from, but it's like you know, you seem like a genuine person, and so, and like you said, this is definitely a, a conversation that would be fun to have and that we need to, especially with some of the stuff I've been saying lately. It's a conversation yes. that we need to have. Yes, let's talk about it. I'm yeah. sorry, I got to get all close for a minute. Change the volume. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so let's just jump right in. So, how are you celebrating your Valentine's Day? Um, so you know, worked out this morning, went to work, um, uh, and just celebrated other people. Uh, you know, seeing other people, you know, post their pictures, post their gifts, just saying, "Oh, you know, looks great. Hope you guys had a great day, great weekend." Just celebrating every, like everyone else. Like that's usually the the best way to like deal with things like this around valentine's day it's like it's okay to celebrate love it's okay like to celebrate that. other people that celebrate so absolutely yeah. i think that's a big one that was actually like six points down on my list over here but <laughs> because i wanted to talk <laughs> about that how um you know as single people we have friends and brothers and sisters who um are are in relationships or in marriages and we see them and we see what they get to celebrate and how they're doing things and right. you know making their posts and if we're just being completely transparent sometimes as single people it's like well i don't want to see that because it's not happening for me like i want to go to real lifestyle like <laughs> you know what i'm saying but at the yeah, same yeah, time yeah. to be able to just celebrate somebody else and know that um god is not a respecter of person if he can do it for them he can do it for us so i love that celebrating yeah. other people i was doing the same thing i was leaving my heart <laughs> leaving my heart all day on the oh, yeah? kind of, uh, post. <laughs> I, mean, I love that love that so it's nice to be able to do that for other people um yeah. but for you personally how how do you feel that you um combat that like when you do see your brothers and sisters or or mainly brothers for you being blessed and you feel like i've been waiting it's not happening for me but i see these people are getting engaged and especially valentine's day i've seen about four rings already on the top line. yeah yeah, like, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> but how do you combat yeah. that um honestly it's really i don't want to say that there's no way to combat it you know a lot of people say you know don't think about it your time will come work while you wait you know all of these great things and great advice which i agree with wholeheartedly but i really don't think that there's anything that that you do to combat it like i think you just continue to be like a whole person yeah. right because it's like it's really the only thing that you can do you know you continue to build yourself you continue to love yourself because honestly, when you really think about it, once we get into a relationship that leads to an engagement, like we bring in another person into our lives, but we, we still want our lives to be, you know, we want it to be what we want it to be, we want it to be good. Like I'm not sitting over here waiting to do things because I don't have anyone to do it with, right? So there's really no way to combat it. You know, like I said, you celebrate it and you, you get advice from them. You don't, you don't avoid it. That's one thing I'm, I'm not a fan of. I don't, I don't avoid anything any feelings any emotions like you yeah. deal with it Good. because you know i'm saying if you don't deal with them then they don't get fixed so in order to fix it you have to deal with it yeah. so i don't really think you can bat it i don't really think that you can honestly yeah I don't. That's good. Definitely don't avoid it. <laughs> I know. I mean, but we've all been there. I mean, for me, I like I said, the way this idea came to pass, I've definitely had some Valentine's Days where I was like, I'm not going on social media. I don't want to see right. nothing else. I'm going to just watch Netflix. And that's fine, too. But I'm just saying, but it wasn't in the spirit of I'm celebrating somebody else or, you know, being happy for them. It was more so like, what about me? You know, and I think that sometimes... Yeah in this season, we definitely have to break that by just saying, wait a minute, like you said, in this season, it's, it's meant for other things. Even scripturally, it tells us right now, we should be focusing on the things of God. So work, like you said, working while we're yeah. waiting and, you know, combating it with staying busy. For me, it's staying busy. Um, you know, I got to do something. I got to plan something. You know, I got to go somewhere where I have to, you know, just keep my mind to not necessarily focus on what I don't have, but to celebrate what I do, have, yeah. you know, and I have family and I have friends and, you know, people who call and check on me, hey, you okay? And I try to do the same thing for them. So that yeah, helps yeah, yeah. a lot. Um, so I want to ask you, why do you think it's so hard to date in the church? Like, I have people that I know <laughs> that are not saved or people who are just not attending church regularly. 
And it's like they can go out and just find somebody the same day. And it's like, but in church, it seems like it's so yeah. difficult to connect with someone. Why is that in the church? Yeah. It's a difficult, it's a difficult question to, I will say, I will start by saying this, uh, because I seen a post other, the other day that kind of upset me. It's not because all the single men are gay. Okay. Let's just, let's just get the, let's get that out of the way. <laughs> let's get that out of the way. Right. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's a lot of spicy guys in the church, but if we're being, if we're being honest, that's not the reason why, you know? Uh, I honestly believe that that it's a certain, I don't want to say persona, but there is, it's a certain kind of image that you want to keep yeah. up in church, right? So as a man of God, you know, as somebody that's, you know, been called to to minister and to serve and to do all of those great things, the last thing you, you know, you want to do is be seen with everyone, right? That's and good. so, because that's the honest part about it is that me being in the world once upon a time, it's like people don't mind you dating different people at different times, at different moments, you know, uh, and getting to know different people, right? But it's like the moment, you know, you do it inside of church, it's like, oh, okay, he talking to somebody else. He like that. Oh, you don't need to talk to <laughs> was though last week, right? You know, and so it's difficult for, for that reason. One is because we, you know, we have this this image to uphold as Christians, as believers, as witnesses, right? And so even besides that, I honestly do believe that we haven't set up just the right type of communication between man and woman. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I honestly think that a lot of guys deem women to be unapproachable for some reason. I don't know. This is what I've heard. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know if they're standoffish. I don't know if you guys just look mean. <laughs> I don't know what it is, right? And so I really do think that, I think that, we've kind of neglected people in a sense and we put the word settling behind it. I think a lot of people are afraid to settle, you know, but it's really only, it's like, man, we get the, the, the distinct disdain of, we don't get to say, oh yeah, I just don't want to yeah. settle. Cause you always hear, why is there so many saved women in the church that's single and it's, these guys aren't approaching mm -hmm. them. Right. And it's because the same reason, you know, some women, you know, they don't want to talk to Big Bruce in the sound room. They don't want to talk, you know, to the guy with all the keys. It's like you don't want to settle, mm -hmm. you know. You don't want to, you don't want to settle for something that you that's permanent. And so, it's difficult all the way around. I think it's difficult in the world. I think it's difficult in the church. But I think it's more difficult in the church because we have to uphold our witness yeah. and our image above all else. And so, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I have to clear that we do not look mean. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's, that's good. I, I agree with that. Definitely. Um, there is, like you said, that reputation that we have to protect our name. We want our names to be clean. So I can understand that. Um, I think that a, a lot of times as women, we hate to hear that, that men feel like they can't approach us or feel like we're unapproachable. And so that kind of stemmed another question for me. Um, uh, attraction still has to be mutual. So as a woman, if we were to find ourselves attracted to Bruce in the sound room, like, you know, but we can't be all up in his face because we've been taught and we've been groomed that it's supposed to be the man that pursues. It's supposed to be the man right, who right, right. findeth a wife. Um, so, I mean, I can't just walk up to Bruce like, hey, you know, like how does the woman Approach, I don't want to say approach for, you know, before lack of better words, how do we express interest without looking like the world? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm trying right. to be careful with the words oh. here. <laughs> right. And it's, 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 it's difficult, like, like legit, you know, it is difficult. And so what I do notice a lot is that uh, a lot of guys are afraid to shoot their mm -hmm. shot for some reason. I don't, I, I'm from the old school. The worst you can hear mm -hmm. is no. Listen, I'm from the old school. The worst you can hear is no. And so that's how I operate. But I understand that a lot of people don't don't operate like that. And so honestly, I think that no guy is that naive. Like we can tell the subtle, you know, haze and the, the carry on of the conversation when you ask, oh, you know, how was service? Mm -hmm. Or you know what I'm saying? How was your week? The continuance of that, which leads into, you know, more and more and more conversation. But um, me personally, I don't, I don't, 
I understand that it's frowned upon, but I don't see anything wrong with displaying interest. Like, what does that look like, I really, though? I really don't. What does yeah. it look like? What does it look like when a guy does it? You know what but I mean? That's, but that's like, the double like, standard literally. to me, though. Like, a man can come up and say, hey, you know, I want to take you out. Like, a woman can't say that, hey, I want you to take me out. <laughs> right. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's not a, it's not about the it's like you can walk but you can walk up to a guy and tell him, Yeah, you look you look handsome or you look nice today. It's like I said, it's subtle things that you can do to display interest, right? It doesn't it doesn't always have to be yeah, yeah let me buy you dinner as a woman telling the man that it doesn't sound right. I'll I'll agree, <laughs> but there are there are subtle ways that you can do it. I believe. I mean, but that's just me. A yeah. lot of people think like, yeah, like the man is the man is supposed to pursue don't get me wrong like that's you know what i'm saying i believe that wholeheartedly but we're living in a time where women legit know what yeah. they want like i we've never i've i've never seen a time in my life where you know you know women they know exactly what they want they know what they want out of yeah. a career out of education out of out of a family out of all of those things you know exactly what you want right but it's like, for some reason, you still want that innocence when it comes to relationships, when it comes to getting to know somebody. And I personally don't blame you for it. But at the same time, I think that you should take the, the same approach as you do with the other things that you're for sure that you want. Mm. Damn, men are mind readers. Like, even when, like, to approach, even when you get into relationships, you know, I know, I know that y'all expect us to be mind readers, but <laughs> men, men are mind readers, unfortunately, like. We're, we're not that bright sometimes wow <laughs> i think i think that's that's some nuggets you just dropped there i hope the ladies are listening so we can we can put subtle hints out there ladies it's okay it's okay for us. but you already but, but, but y'all know that like like how do you feel like have you ever like been interested in somebody in church yet you didn't know how to approach them absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. So what? But what? But what did you do? But you? But you? But you, you didn't just. You gave. Did you give a subtle hint? Like, if, if you were to give a subtle hint, what do you think that looks like? I think for me, it's because as women, you know, we're taught, or at least I know I was taught, don't be in his face. You know, don't be in his face. That makes you look a certain way as a woman. So as a woman, I never want to look thirsty. You know, like I'm, I'm just all in, in right. your face, you know, telling, you know, how I feel and all these kind of things. I think for me, it's just like you said, those subtle hints, you know, a smile here, um, definitely conversation, you know, I can't run in the other direction. I can't be scared of him, but, you know, just kind of like making sure if he asks me a question, you know, I'm, I'm receptive to what the conversation is. I think generally, and I mean, I can't speak for men, but I think generally men know if you're not interested, you know, like they should yeah. be able to kind of see like, okay, she's not open. I got to keep going. So when I am open, I try to make sure that that's when I'm definitely receptive to what's happening, you know, open to those conversations. Um, you know, for me, that's, that's what I've always known. But I think nowadays, like you said, it's just women do know what they want. And so it's just more like, well, Hey, we're in a different generation. Is it okay for me to tell somebody like, Hey, I'm feeling him. You know, I really want to get to know him and then, you know, see how that goes without it making you look like you're busy. You know, and it's like, no, yeah. it's not I'm busy. I just want to make sure he see me. Like okay. a man found it for wife, but if I'm not out there, he can't find me, right? <laughs> right. No. Nah. I have seen something. I, somebody somebody did do a real smooth once. Like their friend came over and, and asked me, like, what do you think about such and such? You know, and it's like, well, you know she's this she's that you know yeah i think you guys look good together or whatever and then they, they you know they, they kind of put that in like mm -hmm. your subconscious into your mind you know what i'm saying to to look for those hints now and so there's plenty of ways i believe to you know let somebody know that you're interested but me personally i don't i don't see any wrong with being upfront and honest mm. like of course not bold like yeah you're fine oh, you know don't. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like we don't want to we don't want to go there we don't want to go there, but yeah, I do think that there are subtle ways. I see my cousin in the comments. She's like, you just circle an old school yes or no letter. Do you like me? <laughs> no, <I'm good. laughs> no, we can't do that no more. <laughs> Nowadays, it's just that slide in the DMs. That's the yes or no letter. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the story. Listen, that's the, it's the stories now. That's the trick. Listen, that's why Facebook know what they be doing. Instagram know what they be doing. It's, it's the setup. stories. That's what everybody, that's what everybody be on. That's 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 some slight game too for the woman. Like you leave a heart, 
here or there. You leave, you know, laugh here or there. They'll respond. Hey, every heart don't mean I like you. We got to clear that up, too. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I'm not saying that it do. I'm just saying to get a response. I'm just telling you what can get a response. It might not be the response <laughs> you want, so you got to be careful. But like I said, if you want a response, yeah, that's usually how sure. it goes. So talking about social media and that, what about online dating? As saved singles, should we be online dating? Is it a yay or a nay for you? <laughs> it's difficult. What, what, what classifies as online dating? I'm talking dating? about your tenders. I'm talking about Bumble, Hinge. Like, should we be on there looking for love? Now I will say, as a you know, as, as a believer, I believe that, and I believe that they have sites like that, that focus Mingle. on the strength <laughs> of believer, right? Yeah. So I do, I do think if you were that you would wanted to make sure that it's of like-minded people, right? So I don't want you on Tinder swiping left and right, and you <laughs> you getting ready for a meetup you're not ready for. It. So it's like you know we wanted to be you know of course on on like-minded believers, but I think besides that, I don't see anything anything wrong with it. I mean, I think that. We have to understand, right, that even in the, the phase of the basic or the beginning of starting to form a relationship, right, it's, we can't focus on what other people mm -hmm. think. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't have the mindset of, well, what if I do this or what if I do that? Like, what will people think about it, right? It's like you never want to get into the mindset of bringing everybody else's opinions on to you about what you should do. So I think that if you don't mind it, in your in your mind, if you don't mind, you know, going online or, or on Facebook or on wherever you want to go to shoot your shot or you want to go to Christian <laughs> Mingle to shoot your shot, like for real, I believe that, you know, of course, be wise about it, use wisdom. But after that, it's 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 your preference, mm -hmm. you know. Like I I think that so many times we get all of this advice from people that are still yeah. single, you know, and and we don't understand like it's it's about how you feel about, you know, what you yeah. want to do. If you're comfortable with it. I say go for it. Me personally, I mean, I haven't. I've never done it. I've never. I've never done. I've never made a profile or anything like that. That's that's not me, you know. But but there are people now that are kind of shy. They are, they are kind of timid, and they they do. I don't want to say hide behind their phone or computer screens, but they use it as a coping mechanism to where it's like, all right, now I don't have to approach yeah. somebody at the grocery store. I don't have to, you know, what I'm saying approach somebody at church. I can I can just simply send a message or tap like or show that I'm interested. And so I don't think anything's wrong with that personally. I would like to know, like, what do you, what do you, what do you think about so it? So for me, um, I've absolutely tried it um, a couple times actually. Um, but I think definitely not even just being a woman, but being saved, it's important to let people know upfront who you are. Um, so I can't be on no profile with no freakum dress on, you know, really trying to, to look yeah, yeah. What's your bio read? I want to know what's in the bio. <laughs> no. What's in the bio? No, exactly. Yeah. But that needs to be up front. Just like if you were getting to know anybody else on any other level. If I did meet somebody at Walmart, I still got to let him know, hey, this is what I believe. This is what I stand for. I'm not doing right. this. You can't take me here. You can't treat me this way. Just like I would establish all of those boundaries up front, I think it's the same thing online because what's the difference with meeting someone who is not saved online versus meeting someone who's not saved in Walmart? Either way it goes, yeah. I still have to let him know, hey, I'm a woman of God, you know, and I have standards. I have morals that I won't jeopardize um, because I got goals and I'm trying to see him in the end, <laughs> you know. So if I put that right, out right, there. Right. Um, for me, I feel like it's, it's twofold because now I have a chance to witness to somebody. I have a chance to potentially bring somebody in, but at the same time, I have a chance at a connection, you know, but you still have to, uh, not only set those boundaries for the other person, but you have to set those boundaries for yourself because I also can't allow yeah. myself to let emotions get involved with something that may not go nowhere. And I can say that from definite experience um you know as a woman yeah. 
definitely we are emotional creatures and you know ladies be careful because your emotions will definitely fall if you're not careful and we have to guard ourselves we have to guard our hearts we have to guard our emotions because if you fall into something that's not created for you now you got to suffer unnecessary heartbreak now you got to suffer yeah. unnecessary consequences now you got to suffer potential sin and backsliding and everything else that can come along with it and now you've messed up yeah. more than just your name or your reputation, but you've messed up a lot. And the hard part is not asking God for forgiveness. The hard part is forgiving yourself. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think a lot of people, that's true. a lot of people can't handle that kind of guilt, <laughs> you know? And then now you walking around because you let yourself fall into something that wasn't even designed for you. Um, but right. to, I guess that was a real long answer, but like in, in the no, short frame, no, 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 no. I think good, it's though. okay to online date. I do think it's okay. But I think that you have to be honest with yourself. If you are not ready yeah. for that, if you're not ready to set those boundaries for that person as well as yourself, then no. Get offline, delete the profile, and <laughs> just wait on God. Right. No, that's <laughs> but true. if you can establish those boundaries and you are seasoned enough, if you are in a place where you can do that, then I think it's fine. Because your husband or your wife may not be in the church right now. And if we're saying, oh, I can't date somebody because they're not saved, and this is my opinion. I know when we talk about the unequally yoked aspect, it get kind of, it get kind of <laughs> crunchy. But, but for me, <laughs> for me, it's, it's, you know, if you are strong enough, then, like I said, you, you're one, getting a connection, but you're also bringing somebody else in. And they, ain't that what this walk all is all about, you know? So One thing that I will say, that's extremely dangerous uh, and that I always tell people to be careful for, right? It's trying to, it's trying to, to witness with people that you're also trying to establish mm -hmm. an emotional connection, right? Because you get, you get lost yeah. in it. And so you always want to be careful, you know what I'm saying? Especially when you want to put emotion into somebody that still has to be brought yeah. into Christ. Like that's, that's first and foremost, heaven is our, is our main goal above yeah. everything else, right? And so I, I would never want to sacrifice, you know what I'm saying, my emotional or my, you know, relationship or because I like you, you know, let that come between you and your relationship That's with Christ, right. right? So whatever they have to do, you know, I would say allow them to do that first, you know, build your relationship with Christ, love God, get in your word, do all of those great things before you try to establish an emotional connection with them on that level, yeah. right? Because that's dangerous. But but like you said, it did make sense that they might they might not be in the church mm -hmm. yet, right? So the, the person that you're looking for might not be saved yet. But you of course you want them to wait, you want to wait until yeah. they oh, are. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and oh, so <laughs> <laughs> because we don't want to be unequally yoked. And I think that's that's another challenge that we face is that as legit people that that want to live right and want to make it into heaven. I don't want to say that our options are few, but they're definitely limited because everybody's not living the life that they talk about. And so we always have to be careful. We always have to see fruit before we do anything. Like that's my main thing. It's like, I always want to see fruit before I do anything else. Like I want to know that you are living right, that you are saved, that you do love God, that you do have all of these things before, you know, I, you know, I, I decide to approach you because like you said, and I, and I want, and I want to be honest, like, man, we have emotions too. We get emotionally connected as well. I, I don't, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want that to be, you know, like, like we don't, we definitely, you know, we definitely have emotion. And so we get attached and, and sometimes, yeah, we, we find somebody that, that we like and, and that, you know, we want to approach, but, and to be honest, sometimes we're not ready. Mm. Right. And I think that that's how we've messed up. I don't want to say messed up, but I think that's how we've, we've kind of shamed some people or some like that form of, how a relationship looks inside the church because we can't admit like I wasn't ready. I liked her so much, but I wasn't ready, but I continue to try to pursue okay. it. Right. And now I've got myself into this emotional connection and eventually somebody has to be let down because I'm just going through the motions at this point, because it doesn't matter how much he loves you or how much he likes you. If that man is not ready to marry you, then honestly, that man's not ready to be in a relationship. And that's the way, you know, I try to operate. Right. So if you can't see yourself, uh, marrying someone, you know, or you can't see yourself th this being long term. I don't believe any any form that you try to. I don't think any emotional tie that you try to have to somebody should be short term. 
you know, there's no serial dating. I don't believe in Christ. I don't, I don't believe that we should serial date. I believe that we should approach people with the purpose that, yeah, I prayed about it. I thought about it. You know what I'm saying? I've talked to God about it. And now I'm attempting to get to know you. And so I think that it's, it's our natural reaction as men. We see something we like. We want to yeah. talk to her. We want to get to know her. But we also have to be honest with where we are. Because honestly, some people, and it may sound, and it may sound bad, right? But some people, I would say we shouldn't even approach until we know for sure that we are right. I see it all the time. I see, I see people all the time approaching people that, that are ready mm -hmm. for marriage. And you understand, you know you're not ready for marriage, yet you are still trying to build this emotional tie. It's dangerous. It does the other person a disservice because, you know, they're coming, to dis they're coming into something blindly. Yeah. And so you never want that. And that's why I always say, before you approach anybody, please be ready. That's the first thing I would advise. Like, be ready before you approach so anybody. So my question, and I also see it in the comments, is what is ready? Like, how does a person know they are ready? Um, I mean, a lot of times it's just, oh, I want somebody. Like I said, today we see everything on Facebook, and it's like, oh, I want that. But how do you know I'm ready for it? I mean, I know, you know, as a woman, we, we know different things that we should be prepared for as a wife and different wifely duties and things of that nature. But just because you can keep a house and you can pay bills don't mean that you're ready to be a wife, you know? So how That's do you true. know mentally as well as spiritual, I'm ready for this? Stronger than just I desire um, it, but I'm actually ready for it. Yeah. That's tough. Um, me personally, like I said, we're just having a conversation. Yeah. I don't I don't have a title. I'm no relationship coach. We're just having yeah. a conversation between two, you know, two friends or two people that yeah. just mutually met each other. But I honestly believe that you're ready when you're not desperate for mm. it. Like, so uh, take it into sense of if you're going to buy a car, right? And I'm, I'm this is probably a terrible <laughs> analogy, right? But let's just get let's just, let's just go for it. You're going to you're going to buy a car. They tell you that this car is a certain price, right? You're gonna be paying three hundred dollars a month, right? Uh, if you're only making a thousand dollars a month and, and rent is $800 a month, you only have $200 left and they tell you this car is going to be $300 a month. You're shorting yourself, you know, a hundred dollars. If you say, well, I want the yeah. car. I want right? the And I think sometimes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. I want the car, but I'm not ready for the car because I can't handle it. You know what I'm saying? And I think that in relationships, I honestly believe that you're ready when you're not desperate mm -hmm. for it. Like when you can honestly see somebody that you're attracted to, but you can pray to God yeah. first. You can, you know what I'm saying? You can, you can check yourself first. Like I said, if the first thing you do, honestly, this, and this is me, this is just me. If the first thing you do when you see somebody is you talk to them and you don't know if you're going to be, if you don't know how you're going to be able to take them out, if you don't know how you're going to be able to take care of them as a man of, of a family of, you know, whatever the future may hold. I believe that you're ready for it when you're not desperate for it. Because honestly, a lot of us, we move out of desperation, like you said. And I, and, and this is no shot to yeah. anybody, but I've seen, I've seen it today. People that have been upset about being single all year, yet we see them, we see them Friday with, you know, we see them Saturday. They had somebody, they had flowers in one hand, chocolates in the other, and they're hugging somebody. But you've been complaining about being single all year. You let the desperation of mm. the moment get to you and somebody you know they, they're trying to capitalize on your desperation yeah. they're trying to capitalize on on you honestly being ready for something that they're not ready for right because that's the conundrum is that some people that we approach they're absolutely yeah. ready like they have everything in order they've been praying they've been seeking god they've talked to their pastor they they've deal with their you know you know their their emotional things that they've been dealing with whether it be stress yeah. or depression or anxiety They've been dealing with those things and they're honestly ready to move forward into a, you know, committed relationship, into a purposeful relationship with somebody. And for you to approach that person, and you only thing that you thought about is he looks good or he looks good or yeah. you know what I'm saying? That That's the last thing I think that we should never go into uh, trying to get to know somebody, honestly, if we feel as though we can't wait to yeah. do it. Right. So I feel like anybody that I, I, I approach that I could approach at this very moment, I could approach them again down the line because I'm not desperate mm -hmm. for it because I'm trusting God to show me is this purposeful. Yeah. And 
And so I honestly believe that you're ready when you're not desperate. Yes, and I, I agree with everything you said. And I would just add that you have to know who you are by yourself. Um, because a lot of us deal with, and I mean, if I, I don't want to go too deep here, but a lot of us deal with some baggage or some things that we carry with us. And so we look for somebody else or we want somebody else to come in and make us whole. But you got to already yeah. be whole, you know, and, and that takes some searching, that takes some deliverance, that takes some time with God. And in our singleness, as we know, that is our time with him. Because as a married person or to change, you know, into that committed relationship, your priorities change. Of course, God is still yeah. first, but now that person, you know, is second. They're, that person is next. So you have to understand who you are um, to be able to even just help. Um, as a woman, we know we are going to be a helpmate. How can I help my husband if I'm broken? You know, like it's the right. things you got to make sure no, you got true. together first. Um, and I think that that's a lot of things that a lot of people miss out on because like you said, it's a popcorn generation. I want to put it in the microwave and in two minutes, put some butter on it. Like, right. <laughs> but I didn't take any time to prepare it or to get it, you know? So I agree with that. Let me see what this is. Yeah. And I've seen a question and I'm not, I'm not sure if these are coming in on time or not, but somebody said, uh, does independence mean that a person is ready for dating when you're able to stand on your own two feet? And I think that's a, and I think that's a great question, right? Because I know broken people, I know broken people that make a lot of money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? I know yeah. broken, I know broken, responsible people. If we're being honest, I've been there. I've been, I've been, you know, I've had everything together in life, but my heart. And so I think that, I think that it's dangerous to say, well, because I can afford you, I'm yeah. ready for you because that's not what it's about, right? Because you have to have capacity in every area. If it's finance, you have to have capacity there. If it's in the heart, if it's in, you know, emotion wise, you have to have capacity there. You have to be able to make room in every area for somebody else. There has to be room yes. for somebody else. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's in your heart, if it's in your mind, if it's in your space, and that's how you have to see it. I have to make room for this person everywhere. Like, and, and that's how we see it because it's it's not intrusion, but we, we willingly let them into our lives, right? And we can't tell you, you can't be a part of this because I'm not ready for mm. it. Because in their mind, it's like, well, you approached me. You know, <laughs> you wanted this. This is what you fought for. You pursued me. And for you to say that I can't, you know, completely, I can't open up that box or I, you can't completely deal with your emotions. It's like, so why did you tell me you yeah. were ready when you're not? So I, I do believe that financial independence um is not the way right i believe that you have to be stable in every area you don't have to be rich you don't have to have all the money in the world you are you know but you do you have to be able to legit be stable in every area that's, that's good. what i believe that's good i agree with that um definitely like i said you know we know responsibilities as a woman what you're well, what we know as a woman's responsibility what the man's responsibility is and a lot of times people have those things but like you said they are broken inside so that's going to supersede everything else because now i'm getting to know you on a deeper connection and spiritually we don't even align you know what I'm saying? You might right. have all the money. You can, you can buy me that biz, but, <laughs> but you cannot yeah. mend, you know, problems or you can't pray with me. You can't talk with me. Yeah. You know, I think that's a big thing. Communication is huge. You know, we can't shut people out just because we don't want to deal with that moment. I think that's another form of knowing that you're not ready um, because you yeah. haven't dealt with something and you have to deal with all those things before you bring somebody else in because that's selfish now i'm being selfish right. because i'm asking you to come in and help me fix all these things that i've never seek god to fix for myself so definitely right. i agree with that i like this conversation so you you got some questions for me i don't want to keep feeling like i'm interrogating you you want to you want to flip the script for a minute um I can try to come. I can try to come up with some questions. I mean, like when, 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 when I don't like. I said we're just literally having a conversation, right? So I guess, I guess, the question for me is like, yeah, when do, when do you think, you know, you're, you're ready? Besides, like the whole financial point, like in your mind, right? A guy approaches you and says he wants to get to know you, right? What's your next move after that? I think. I think definitely, um, kind of, kind of going back to what I said, I have to know that I'm whole on my own. 
you know, and not just necessarily I can pay my own bills and I can do all those kinds of things. That's not what I mean, but I mean is I'm comfortable with myself. Um, you know, not not being in that desperate state. It's Valentine's Day, but I don't want to just go be with somebody just for the sake of feeling like I had somebody on Valentine's Day and I know it's not going anywhere, then I'm still broken. You know what I'm saying? I think that yeah. knowing I'm comfortable with myself. Now I, I can I can be free to say, hey, I, I want to get to know you too. I want to make sure that I can set those boundaries. Um, because in this walk, we have to make sure that we're comfortable to say who we are and what we stand for. And if you get into a relationship and because now emotions have gotten involved and feelings have gotten involved, now you're letting down your morals. You're letting down your standards. You're not being true to yourself because you're trying to hold on to a person. I think once you yeah. are strong enough to be able to, you know, put your foot down on who you are, then you're ready. You're ready. Um, because every, yeah. and then also, you can't be selfish, period. Selfish in so many ways. And I know um, from from single perspective, when you're single and you're doing things the way you want it to be done all the time and the way you have gotten accustomed to it, becoming in a relationship, you now have to mend two personalities. You have to mend two, you know, different opinions and viewpoints so you have to be ready to compromise because it's not going to be your way every day i might be talking Listen. to myself but but it's not going to be but, your but way I think that, every day so you got to make sure you're ready for that compromise seriously and i, I think that we i think that we don't look at the advantage mm -hmm. of being yeah. single like you legit only have to deal with you like you know what I'm saying? I, I get it. Some of us, we're approaching 30, we're approaching 35, and it's like, I don't have anybody, right? But <laughs> it is like we don't, we don't, we don't have anybody, right? But understand, you're forsaking a lot of your leisure time. You're forsaking a lot of the things that make you use, you know, a lot of the times when you bring somebody else in. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it takes up time. You have to make time to communicate, to go out. Like I know me personally, like if it's snowing yeah. outside and, and, it, and it's cold, and it's, we in Michigan, if it's bitter cold, listen to me, I don't have to go anywhere, right? But you don't always get that decision when you're in a relationship. Oh, okay, but yeah, you said we were going out tonight. And as a man, you have to be able to your work. Doesn't matter what it feels like outside, right? So I think that we, we miss a lot of the benefits or we just kind of negate a lot of the benefits of being single you know like it is going to be a lot different when someone comes into your life so please make sure above all like you're enjoying this time right i'm not sure every i'm not i'm not telling you everything has to be self-help books or everything has to be you know building myself for a relationship like no nah, take the trip you want to take like legit without having to wait for somebody to plan it or without having having to have somebody that, that's going to slow you down when you're there i've been there listen to me i'm not i'm not saying that you're better off single i'm saying enjoy every season enjoy every moment no matter what it is like enjoy this moment yeah yeah so so what do we do in those lonely times though because absolutely we can enjoy and we can do the things that we want to do for ourselves and you know, take yeah. a trip or, or just go to the movies. Like, I've even learned how to do things on my own. You know, before the pandemic, I would absolutely go yeah. to the movies by myself with my popcorn, no problem. <laughs> um, but there yeah. are days when, honestly, we are lonely. And I mean, people say, oh, that's an emotion, but it's real. It's so real. It is. So what do we do in those lonely times? How do, how do we build up strength in those times? Yeah. Um... That's always been one of the toughest mm -hmm. questions for me, right? And so uh, it's been a while since I've, I've been in a relationship, but I know that the last one I got out of, it was tough because, you know, you're used to being with somebody, you're used to being with someone. And so when you don't have them anymore, it's like you remember when you're alone, you remember every yeah. good thing that you guys did, right? You remember every every good memory that you ever had, it seems to come into your mind. It's like now all I'm doing is remembering, you know, what I went through with them, right? And so what I honestly learned to do is not run away from uh, my emotions mm -hmm. or thoughts. Because I think that's our first thing when we feel lonely is to, to pick up something that's going to cause a yeah. distraction, right? To watch a movie, to take ourselves on a date, as we say, to 
you know, go over somebody's house or call somebody. Though these are some of the first things we think to do. But I wanted, like, I don't think that we've ever thought, like, maybe I should deal with this emotion. Mm -hmm. Like, because honestly, it's not going yeah. anywhere. Like, just because I don't feel it when I'm laughing with friends, you know, just because I don't feel it when I'm, you know, when I'm out at a movie, doesn't mean that I don't have to go Absolutely. back home, right? And so one thing that I wholeheartedly believe, and I, t I, told, I told everybody, like, when I was hurt, it's like, Whatever you do while you're happy, you can do while you're hurting, you know? And, and, and I don't think that we see it like that a lot of the time. And I think that that's why so many people, are, they get depressed and they, they have anxiety and, you know, they get upset. It's like, because they feel as though, because I'm unhappy, I have to, I don't, I don't, I don't get to do anything because I'm unhappy, right? But life doesn't stop because you're hurting. And it's hard, it's kind of hard to, to kind of hear that, but you, everything that you're doing while you're happy, you can do while you're hurting. And so you can still laugh while you're hurting. You can still you can still read your words yes. while you're hurting. You should probably read it more. You can still pray while you're hurting, right? And so in those moments where you're hurting, feel it, acknowledge it, and deal with it honestly, because it's not going mm -hmm. anywhere, right? And so when we go out and we try to be busy, all we're really doing is masking it into another time because there's going to be a time when you got to sit down and you got to deal with it because yeah. you can't go anywhere and it'll drive you crazy if you if you don't know how to deal with it if you don't know the right prayer to mm -hmm. pray if you don't know the right words to read if you don't know you know the right things to do to get you out of that place that you get in because we all have them yeah. right and i want to say this and i don't know why i want to <laughs> say this but i, I really want to say this to somebody like because i wish somebody would have told me right if you're dealing with with those emotions when you're alone of missing all the good times that you recently had with someone i want you to understand that it ended for mm. a reason that's you know what i'm saying and i think that so many times we think of all the great memories that we have because we're alone and we're sad and you forget the reason that it yeah. ended in the first place <laughs> they didn't respect you they didn't respect your boundaries they didn't respect your lifestyle they did they weren't able to communicate they didn't love you properly all of these reasons are the valid reasons why, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You left them alone. And so if you're dealing with that, I want you to understand that we tend to only think of the good things when we're alone, but the bad things are really where the deciding factor of why you're not with that person Absolutely. anymore. Like that's, like that's one, like always keep that in your mind. And if you just haven't had anybody in a while, you know, but, but that's what it's, but it's, it's honestly easier that way. Like, you know, when I haven't had anybody and I'm alone, like that's, like, yeah. you know, I, I can do, I can do it. At that point, it's just envy because it's like, all right, look at this. Like, come on now. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been trying to go to this place for the, for the last two years. I ain't had nobody to take mm -hmm. here, right? But, but yeah, I, I think that when you're alone, uh, dealing with those moments, you honestly want to just be in yeah. that moment. Feel it. Feel every aspect of it and acknowledge it that it's real because it yeah. is and uh i would ask the same question to you like as a woman like how do you do oh i think for me um self-discovery like you have to really reevaluate a lot of things um because loneliness is an emotion it's real it's valid but because it is an emotion sometimes i have to really ask myself why am i lonely is it just because yeah. i want someone so now i feel lonely you know, because we're not alone. You know what I'm saying? We're not alone. We have friends. We have family. We have the Lord. You know what I'm saying? We're not alone. But lonely is a feeling. You get what I'm saying? Like, we have to separate alone from being lonely. Because they're not the same thing. Yeah. We're not alone. And I think that for me, um, I'm big on talking. Um, so I would definitely say um, in this walk, we have to have prayer partners. We have to have people that we can have that holds us accountable. I know I have yeah. somebody that's going to tell me, Larry, you're not going to be lonely today. Not today. Get up and do <laughs> something. You know, you want to work out, go work out. You want to go get your favorite meal, go get your favorite meal. But you can change. Yeah. We have the authority to change our feelings. We have the authority to change our day. Yeah. I can wake up and feel upset about something that happened. But I don't have to be upset all day because I have authority no, to true. change my day. I have authority to change my emotions. And because I know that loneliness is an emotion, I have the authority to change that. No, I'm not lonely. Or if I'm feeling lonely today, why? 
what is it today that's triggering that what have i seen what have i put into my uh gates what have i listened to what have i watched who have i been talking to sometimes a lot of those things right. come in and now it's like Oh, I'm only feeling lonely because I just watched this movie on TV and it was so happy. And right. like, now I feel like I don't have that and I'm crying. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, no, I'm really not lonely. Yeah. I just want what I saw on TV. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't like that in real <laughs> life anyway. Right, you have the moment. So it's like, you know, sometimes you really have to just make sure you take your authority and, and navigate how you want your day to go. No, I'm not going to be lonely. Case in point, this live, I, w I was refused to sit at home and feel pity today because there's nothing for me to be pitiful about you know what i'm saying because i know who i am and i know who god is first and foremost and i know that you know my time is coming you know what i'm saying if there's yeah. some things in this season that god has me working out or he has me accomplishing before he wants to bless me with someone then i'm at a place yeah. in my life where i can acknowledge that and i can say okay god will you show me what i'm supposed to be doing you show me where i'm supposed to be because if I'm busy focusing on those things and accomplishing those things, who knows? The husband might be in one of those endeavors, you know, and I don't even see it because I'm so busy doing what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. And I think that a lot of yeah. times it's not necessarily um, being busy to mask it because like you said, we definitely have to deal with those emotions. But I think that if we're busy in the right areas or busy doing the right yeah. things, it's not necessarily just going to change our, our emotion, but it's going to enhance it. Um, and, and let me just tap on that old relationship thing. I agree with you. A lot of times we do flood those memories. Like, I remember when we did this. I remember when we did that. But right, I right, right, right. But I think not only do we have to remember those good things and also the bad, but we have to remember what lesson it taught us. Um, I know for yeah. me personally in my last relationship, it taught me a lot about myself. Um, you know, what place I was in mentally, what place I was in spiritually, um, what place was I in, what was I willing to um, break or bend or, or change for someone else when it wasn't even something that I yeah. needed to do. I mean, if somebody can emotionally tell you something about yourself and you believe them before you believe what you already know, take that as a lesson. You know, yeah. not, they, they can do all the good no. stuff, but... <laughs> They can't be breaking you down, Listen. though. <laughs> and it shows yeah. us, too. Yeah. Like, we, like, we weren't perfect in the relationship that messed up. We, we played a part. Like, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I learned some stuff about me. You learned some stuff about you, you know, and the things that you messed up. And so, and that's the difficult part about, about dating, right? And this is why, and this is another question that, that you know, that I want to deal with is soulmates. Mm. I believe that that's another difficult task, right? Because it's like in every other area we say, oh, you know, people are seasonal. Got to give you people for a yeah. season. Yeah. And, you know, and they're there for that season to teach you lessons for that season. But not with relationships. It's like when we come in contact with somebody, we think it's mm -hmm. forever, right? And so, and that's why it's tough for me to believe that, like, yeah, there's a person out there that's designed specifically for you, totally shaped for you, right? And so my thing is, if you're approaching this singleness with that mindset of, I'm going to find my soulmate, mm -hmm. right? You'll critique everything about the person that's supposed to be your soulmate. Oh, well, God didn't show me, you know, he would have a receding hairline or God didn't, God didn't, show, God didn't show me she'd have two left, two left feet. It's like, you know... It's like you have to get out of your mind that that, that there's a certain type of, of person that, that's designed for you. I, I will tell you this. They have purpose and they're yeah. saved. That's, that's, that's what they have. They have purpose and they're saved. That I can yeah. guarantee you. That's the only thing I can guarantee yeah. you. But, but yeah, it's, it's so amazing. It's, a, it's another uh, thing that I deal with because I've talked to so many people. Oh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting on my soulmate. And it's like, it's, di it's difficult for me. Like, what do you think about soulmate? Honestly, I mean, I've really never thought about it. Um, I mean, I know we hear that term all the time. Oh, this is my soulmate. This is the person that was supposed to be with me. Um, and I don't want to get real deep, but I am a student of the word, so I'm big on words. <laughs> so when I think about soul, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, what is the soul? You know what I'm saying? I'm looking for my spirit mate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't want the soul mate <laughs> because the soul mate... <laughs> I don't want to go there, Stephen. You taking me <laughs> up 
Oh, no, you get dark. Go ahead. You get deep. Go ahead. <laughs> For me, I'm like, wait a minute, I got to evaluate that word. Is that just cliche? That's just something people say because that's what they think is cute. Oh, that's my soulmate. That's my right. soulmate. But what is the soul? This, right. You know, let's, let's really, you know, so I can't, I can't answer that question the way you want me to because my mind is going way deeper than it needs to no, go. No, listen, I... <laughs> Listen, I hear you 100%. So I'm like, Listen. you know, God send me my spirit mate. Bring me the man that's going to bring me closer to you or that's going to lead me as he follows you. You know, because that's the man right. I want. The soulmate is somebody I want. That's somebody I didn't fathom in my mind. Exactly. He's going to be six foot. Exactly. He's going to exactly. work here. But that man can't love me the way God wants my husband to love me. So, I exactly. mean, if I really, I mean, and that's just the off the dome answer because I never thought about it like that. You know, no, that's that's completely honest, though. I saw another like, question in the comment. Are we supposed to be dating multiple people? <laughs> uh oh, oh, head scratch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Are we supposed, are we supposed to be doing what? <laughs> should we be dating one person at a time or should we be dating multiple people? Listen. <laughs> I'm scared. Once again. <laughs> What? Listen, I'm scared. I don't even know. Like, should I answer this? Listen, should I answer this? Should I be completely honest, right? I think that everything we do has to be with intention, mm -hmm. right? And so, so many times I tell people uh, that it's scary to date multiple people, right? Because we'll, we're, 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 we literally, what we do when we're dating multiple people is we use one person as a crutch. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you, and we use this person as a crush to honestly uh, disguise the emotions or disguise the, you know, kind of the, the feelings that we do have for the other person. Because honestly, me personally, when you're dating more than one person, you like someone better. You like someone more. I'm just going to be sure. honest. This is just me speaking from experience. Like, if you're dating multiple people, it's somebody that you want, but they're not ready. And this other person is just, they're nice. And so, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and they'll do. But and they'll do. But if we're if we're if we're being honest, I think that we have to have faith in our ability to to be stable with the person that we originally like like yeah. or that we originally wanted to pursue. I'm just speaking for me as a man. I'll ask you as your opinion as a woman. Like I said, for me as a man, I believe that when we in our mind make up in our minds to pursue someone, right? I believe that they deserve like every inch of that yeah. pursuit like they they divide they deserve our entire attention of that pursuit because that's when you know it's genuine and that is purposeful was when not when i can honestly say that all right if this doesn't work out i got you know i got sister mary over there it's like no 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 it's like you who i'm pursuing right and if this is who i'm praying for i don't believe that we can go to god and say god uh i'm pursuing you know such and such right and so if, if, you know, if, if this is her, lead me the right way, but it's like, I know, you know, that, you know, she over there. And if this don't work out, I know that you got my back with that. No, no, no. In prayer, we have yeah. to be, we have to be intentional, right? We have to ask for what we want. And I don't believe that you can do that when you're dating multiple people. I don't believe that it's purposeful when you have, you're trying to date multiple. It's tough for me, right? Because it's like, once I make up in my mind that this is the person that I want to pursue, like I said, in my mind, everything follows that. Prayer follows yeah. that. You know, wisdom and, and seeking and attention, all of that follows that that moment in my mind where I say, this is the person that I want to pursue. So for me, it's difficult. Not against it. If you can handle it, you can handle it. But, but for me, and, I, and I'm just saying, it, I don't think for me that it would work. How about you? I think I would have to go back to um, what I stated earlier about emotions. Um, because it's easy to put your emotions in places just because of a feeling or, oh, you know, he makes me laugh. He makes me smile. He can crack a good joke. He can, you know, do these things. Now I'm having emotions that are involved. So you can't do that with multiple people. But I think also you have to evaluate what is dating because dating is literally I'm taking you here or we're going places with the intentions of getting to know each other 
with like you said the intention of courtship which now means you're not just right. dating me you're not just taking me to the movies but you're actually trying to get to know my mind and my spirit because you want to be my husband and i think so for me dating is really just the aspect of, of getting to know somebody to see if that person is going to move to that next um it, to move to that next level definitely dating is definitely different from courting dating like i said is going out being out doing things with the intentions of getting to know somebody courting means i have the intention of marrying this person we've talked about it we prayed about it we consulted right. with our pastor it, we know it's going there um but i think it's okay to have friends it's okay to have people that you know people that you're cool with you know you may laugh and talk have a <laughs> she said it's, it's the collecting of the data exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> are you going to make it to the next level <laughs> or are you the weakest link like, you, like i can but i think for me it's just i personally would not multi-date I think that I would just if I if somebody approached me with that intention, then then we would decide, okay, we're dating. And then we're going to start getting to know each other to see if we are compatible to move to that next level of courtship. But I don't think I would I don't think multi dating would be something that would be for me either. <laughs> She's saying <laughs> Oh, yes, absolutely, Faith. I agree with that. She said dating multiple people can also cloud your judgment, cloud your mind, because now you got too much going on. It's just too many hands in the pot. Me, I just definitely think multi-dating wouldn't work. I think that, like you said, that one person deserves that, you know, that time and that space. And if it's meant to be, if it's not, God will show you it's not. And then, then God bless you. We can still, we still gonna be brothers and sisters. We still gonna be cordial. We don't gotta be nasty to each other, you know, but it just, right. it didn't work in that way. So definitely. Yeah. And I think somebody say that, uh, somebody said that, uh, that dating is not courting. I get it. Mm -hmm. It's, it, I, I, I really do. But I think that you have to, and I'm, I'm excuse me. I think that you have to question any man, any man's intent that comes to you and says that he wants to to get to know you, but he's not completely invested in that, mm -hmm. right? And 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 I think that's the and I think that's what we deal with a lot of the times is that we're afraid of the, we're afraid we're afraid of the commitment, so we use oh let's try this friend word. Like I see a lot of people say oh oh yeah that's that's my friend that's my friend this and my friend that right. But I think that it's it's literally, I think that we kind of use it as an escape to be intentional. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of use it as an escape to say, like, you're the person that I want to pursue. You're the person that I want to get to know. Like, don't get me wrong. I believe that the basis and the foundation of any relationship is friendship, right? I do believe that. But I also believe that you want a man that honestly, absolutely knows that you're the one that he wants. Mm. Because I can say that literally, as, as a man, as, as a man, we know what we want. A lot of the times you hear a lot of women say, oh, he doesn't know what he wants. If he doesn't know what he wants, then obviously <laughs> sometimes it's not you. And I, it, it sounds blunt, but I'm, I'm, I want to be I want to be as honest and transparent as possible. Every man knows what he wants. A man knows what he wants. Like there's some people, there's some men that are confused and you shouldn't be dating them in the first place. But <laughs> every man knows what he wants. And so if, if, if a man is interested in getting to know you, then he's interested in getting to know you absolutely like that's my take on it that's how i approach it at least i could like i said i can only speak for me it might be some jokers out here that you know they just want to be friends with you but <laughs> that's never that's never my, my <laughs> they put my you in the friend right zone <laughs> yeah we use that but we use that to get close to people yeah. like you know that that's i've used that line as a guy well can we just be friends you know and you think that that's like your that's, that's that's sort of like your your way in to kind of slide in like oh okay yeah let me just try the whole friend thing but we're terrible friends when we do that yeah. like if it's not if the basis is not genuine friendship from the beginning on just being friends then it won't work i'm telling you it, it will not work but i think that's that's like an age-old question can men and women really be friends you know like really you know what I'm saying? I think that a lot of times that that's a big question because what what is the basis of this friendship? And I mean, I'm not saying that we don't have friends of the opposite sex. Definitely we do. But I think that in that kind of scenario, I, I don't, 
It's not going to fly for me. Um, we will be brothers and sisters when I see you. Praise him, brother. <laughs> right. You know you friends when you get that praise him, bro. That's when you know. That's when, that's when you know. I'm like, nah. That's, that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but what about um, just backtracking? So, you know, we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but how do we not backtrack? Um, like, are we, in that instance, are we cutting people off completely? Like, are they just out? <laughs> when, when, when the relationship when is relationships over, relationships don't work, or even in this friend scenario, you know, it's just better for us to not go this level because it's not we're not compatible. Right, right, right. Like, I mean, but are we cutting those people off, or on those quote unquote lonely days? Now it's like, well. He's there, you know what I'm saying? But now right. you're tampering with emotions, you're tampering with all kind of stuff that really shouldn't be tampered with. Yeah. And that's the and that and to me, that's the dangerous part of and, and this goes into the intent of, of, of people as well, man and woman, right? If you know you still like the individual mm -hmm. and you're hoping that this friendship evolves into something more, then you're you're not in it for the right reason. Yeah. Right, your intent is wrong. So if you genuinely want to be friends with someone, then be friends with that person. Not with I'm this is this is stipulation, right? So if I can't have my way later on down the line later on down the line, I don't even want to be friends. Yeah. Right. So if you if you can't go into the mindset of this is a friendship from the beginning, then it's tainted already. Mm -hmm. And so and one thing I, I honestly believe that as far as uh, when the courting doesn't go right or the relationship doesn't go right, and then you guys say that, well, let's let's just be friends, right? I think that it gets dangerous whenever, and I don't think that you can should completely cut ties mm -hmm. with people, right? But I think that it's a certain boundary that you have to put into place whenever you know you stop dealing with someone, yeah. Because the last thing you want to do is continue to allow feelings, like you said, in loneliness and, and desperation and, and cloudiness. The last thing you want to arise is, well, I once had feelings for this person. Right. Right. And so if it's a genuine, if it's a genuine friendship, then allow it to be that. Right. But don't allow it to be, I'm friends with this, I'm friends with this person. And in the case of, you know, me talking to this person over here, doesn't work out. Then I can later on come yeah. back to this and try to evolve this. It's like, if it's friendship, then it's genuine. We know real, you know, you know, real friendships. And I think that a lot of times that's, that's one thing that we have as, as singles. I think that's the most important thing you can do is be honest with yourself. Yes. And no matter what it is like, like legit be honest with yourself so it's like if you tell somebody like yeah i like you but I, i'm just you know i like this person but i'm not completely so like legit be honest with yourself don't try to convince yourself well i can like this person more like no no, no. be honest with the emotion that you're feeling at that moment because that's 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 you that's real don't don't try to convince yourself of things that your heart and your mind isn't convinced of. Absolutely. I agree. Um, I definitely um, have enjoyed this conversation. <laughs> um, you know, definitely. I think that it's, it's been some nuggets dropped today. I think that a lot of good stuff was said. Um, I really hope that, you know, everybody who watched, everybody who commented, um, really got something from it and you know I'll start you know wrapping it up a little bit now um, you know let everybody go on with the rest of their day I don't want to <laughs> hold people too long but um, again definitely thank you for taking that time out to um, to join me today in this conversation and you know just give us some some really good stuff to go with you know I appreciate it um, I definitely didn't want to do this just myself because we always hear the woman's perspective you know, yeah. more so often than a man, we know how single women feel in the church. We hear it. They have seminars, you know, and books, <laughs> conventions, right. you know, but, you know, we very seldom really get to understand from a man's perspective, some of those same thoughts, some of those same emotions, some of those same things. So c thank you for, you know, just being open and being transparent to talk about some of those things. Um, did you want to add anything else? um no like i said this was a definitely a, a a good conversation um 
it's nothing really to add. Uh, thank you for, like I said, inviting me and uh, having a heart to, like you said, have this conversation for those, you know, an outlet or for those that, that were trying to run from social media that they can come and have a space for them uh, to be appreciated and to be talked to. Uh, but no, I don't, I don't really, all I know is, is that I will say this. And like I said, one thing is that I, I try to tell everybody is that singleness is not a disease. Uh, singleness is it's not a curse. It's not, it's not something that it's not your go through. Uh, it's not your test. Uh, honestly, it's, it's, it's a moment that you're in. And, uh, if it, if it, if it, if some, if some way, somehow you never experience marriage, you still have to live safe. You still have to live holy. You still have to love God. You still have to enjoy you. Yes. And so singleness is, is, is not a, it's not a disease. It's, it's, it's not a curse. It's, it's none of that. It's, it's, it's legit. It's the moment that you're in yeah. and you'll be in many moments. You'll be in, you'll be in moments where you're dating. You'll be in moments when you're in relationships and there might be a moment when you're in marriage and that's what we pray for. If that's what you want, mm -hmm. but it's a moment that you're in and, and that's what it is. Don't try to think too much about it. God has me this way because of this, or God has me this way because of this, it's who I am. No, it's a moment. Yeah. And so that's how you should experience it. Yes, Ecclesiastes 3. To everything, there is a season. <laughs> yes, to everything. it's just a season. Um, and if, if, like you said, if God will it to be a season for some time, <laughs> then, we have, <laughs> then we just, we deal with yeah, yeah, yeah. accordingly. <laughs> for sure. But no, I appreciate seriously. you. I appreciate everybody who joined in, who shared, who commented. And we will talk to you guys later. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you.